Hello there, everybody. This is JPS 639 and welcome back to week four of the GPC. Now, it's been a bit since one of these has gone up, but don't worry, week four and five will be coming relatively close to each other. Now, that being said, this week I faced off against El Storch, or El Cizor, uh, Lars. <laughs> to, to be as simple as possible, Lars was my opponent for week four of the GPC, and I wasn't incredibly scared of this battle going into it, but looking back on it, I could have definitely played better. Um, but I'm a bit spoiling the match right now, so essentially, let's get down to basics. I came into this match with a brand new team member. I came into this match with a Floatzel this time, uh, because Floatzel is my, my, uh, Rush, rather. Rush is my newest team member, and I really wanted to put Rush to use. So, looking at his team, he doesn't really have the scariest team. He's got a pretty scary team and some big threats, but there were a few things on his team I was specifically afraid of. Um, I was fearing his Slow King, because it was one of his newest additions, and he could easily run back and forth with that. He had some good advantage against me with the Slow King, and on top of that, Slow King is a total pain to deal with. Um, it has Regenerator, it's a great special wall, so I was thinking he was gonna bring Slow King, Excadrill, Mesmerit, Mega Sceptile, Weavile, and Hippowdon. Uh, the reason for this is I was thinking that he would end up bringing Slow King for HP Recovery and uh, Volt Turn, um, which you could easily work out with Mesprit. I don't think Mesprit actually gets uh, Volt Switch, but yeah. anyway, it works out with the switching uh, sort of mechanic. Uh, Excadrill and Hippowdon come together as expected, um, as Hippowdon was another one of his newer team members, and Hippowdon and Excadrill are a fantastic pair up together, so I was afraid of those. Um, Mesprit is a fantastic wall and uh, set up Pokemon as well as it's a really a wild card, and that's the problem with Mesmerit. I really underestimated Mesmerit's ability because I knew what to expect from Uxie, and I know what to expect from an Azelf, despite the fact nobody has an Azelf right now. So I was fearing Mesmerit um, for that reason. And then Mega Sceptile, obviously, because it's his Mega Evolution, and Mega Sceptile is very strong. And then Weavile, as a fast physical attacker, because that's all he was lacking from this team, barring the Excadrill um, having Sand Rush. Now, I got most of the predictions correct, but the problem came in with what I got wrong. He ended up bringing Vaporeon instead of his Slow King, which in reality I should have probably expected, as I was not able to handle his Vaporeon well at all. Uh, the team I ended up bringing for this matchup was a bit different. Um, but I wanted to prepare for... I, I really just wanted to try to do what I can to prepare for anything this guy brought on his team, despite the fact that... as to whether it was really viable or not. So, I got a team together. It wasn't my best team, honestly, but, uh, my team for this match, I ended up bringing... Unfortunately, Conkelder again. I, I hate bringing him every single game, but he is a very versatile crutch of mine. So I brought Conkelder, uh, or Muscle Man. I brought Wings, His Ancientness, Mega Scizor, Edward, uh, Y2K, and of course, like I already mentioned, our newest team member, Rush, um, to really get some good coverage on his team. I know I knew I needed the physical attackers more than the special attackers, and unfortunately, I ended up being wrong, because um, his special defense was actually lacking in this battle, and I really should have pointed that out when I was face facing against him, but we're going to get into that when we get into that. In the meantime, let's just start off this battle. So I'm going to lead off with Y2K, expecting him to lead off with either his Apaldon to get up the Sandstorm, or his Mega Sceptile. He does start off with the Paladon, so I go for a Leaf Storm as he switches out into his Mega Sceptile, Mega Christmas, and somehow it not being very effective didn't really do much because it did 47% of his health in, almost 48% of his health, which is incredibly strong. Uh, but this, this Rotom 
isn't necessarily just there for walling. He's there to do some damage as well, as I knew that both of his stabs were effective against his team, so Y2K was an essential part of this game. Um, that being said, he switches in Mega Sceptile, and he takes a bit of damage from the Sandstorm. He's gonna pull out Sceptile and go into Excadrillus. I'm gonna pull out Y2K and go into Muscle Man, simply because I wanted to make sure that whatever he would go into or whatever he would do, I would be able to take. And Muscle Man can take a hit from the Sceptile because it does have the Assault Vest. Now, he pulls out his Excadrill and goes into Spritty the Mesperit as I go for a Drain Punch. I didn't really want to make too much of a bold prediction because I knew that he could easily just bring in Mega Sceptile again, probably survive a knockoff, and kill me off the next turn with something else because I'm taking Sandstorm damage. Um, but instead, I just go for safe, uh, safe play, go for a Drain Punch, see if maybe he tries to stay in with the Excadrill, but he doesn't. He goes into Mesperit, hardly takes any damage. So this Mesperit is clearly invested in HP of some kind. So, I'm sitting here, I'm not really worried about this mess period, but that was my downfall. He goes for Stealth Rocks, as I go for a Stone Edge and end up missing. Unfortunately, I wanted to go for a Stone Edge to see how much damage I could do to this thing neutrally, without it being, or without being 100% sure that it's a physical wall. Um, so I went for a safe Stone Edge, uh, because I brought the Stone Edge in preparation for stuff like the Weavile, or just for good neutral damage all around, and Mesprit ends up avoiding the attack, which is a real shame. Then he goes for Zen Headbutt, and does 72.5% of my health in. This thing is physically offensive, and it did a lot of damage. I was horrified when it did 72.5% of my health. I invested a little bit into my HP, but Conkeldur's pretty bulky in his HP and defense stats, so it really took me by surprise with that Zed headbutt came in and smashed my face in. So anyway, then I'm gonna go for a fire punch. Uh, the reason I have fire punch is to deal with uh, several of his uh, weaknesses to fire on his team, and that only does 24%. Uh, I went for the stone edge earlier to get neutral damage just because I knew it would do a bit more realistically, and it really probably wouldn't have made much of a difference. Fire Punch did almost nothing, so that was horrifying. So at this point, I, I was I was scared. So I switch out into his Ancient Nest, which is my defensive wall for the match, and he goes for Zen Headbutt. It's not going to do too much damage, thankfully, because his Ancient Nest is very physically bulky. So he's going to pull out Mess Spirit and go into Vicorion the Vaporeon. And this Vaporeon was my biggest problem this whole battle. So I'm going to set up Toxic Spikes, and he's going to go for a Wish, much like a typical Vaporeon, with Scald, Wish, Protect, and a fourth move. I was thinking his fourth move was something like the Acid Armor. Uh, in fact, it didn't. It was not Acid Armor. Instead, turned out to be Substitute. But I predicted this guy would have Ice. It would have Ice Beam as his fourth move on Vaporeon, which is what I was really afraid of. So I was playing around in this thing, thinking it had Ice Beam the entire game just horrified of what would happen. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to stay in, I'm going to go for Stealth Rocks, and then he's going to go for Scald on the next turn as I go for Toxic Spikes. I want to get up those Toxic Spikes because everything on his team, other than the Mesperit and the uh, Excadrill, will take Toxic Spikes damage. It's going to deal a lot to the Vaporeon upon him switching back in, and I know that Amistar can kill an Excadrill with a strong enough attack if he tries to switch Excadrill in to rapid spin the Spikes away. So... Overall, I think it would have helped out, especially against the Hippowdon. Um, so what, what's going to happen? I'm going to pull his ancient now, ancientness out and go into Y2K, really careful of the fact that he could have Ice Beam. And what, what he's going to do is he's going to go for a Scald again. He gets a crit, and I, it doesn't get the burn, thankfully. But then I start to think, maybe he doesn't have Ice Beam, but I don't want to be sure because he could have just been hiding it the whole time. And I was really afraid of this Ice Beam, guys, let me tell you. So I'm going to go for a Will-O-Wisp, predicting him to switch out for the fear of a Leaf Storm or a Volt Switch. He doesn't switch, however, takes the hit of a Will-O-Wisp, goes for a Wish. I go for a Leaf Storm the next turn. He survives the Leaf Storm, goes for another Scald. The Burn's going to do some damage after the Wish comes in and heals him already, so he's back up to 59%. And I'm going to go for another Will-O-Wisp now, thinking, okay, well he's got to switch out now. But no, he stays in, goes for, an goes for another Wish, and at this point, I'm pissed. I always disliked Vaporeon, much like I dislike Umbreon. But this is just ridiculous, because Vaporeon's going to sit here the entire time, regardless of what I do, 
constantly regaining more of its HP. So at this point, I I just gave up on this Vaporeon. I'm gonna Volt Switch out out of with Y2K, and I'm gonna go into Wings, which is my Latios. Uh, he's mainly there for some good damage on this turn, and he gets another critical hit with his Scald, also burning Wings. Which was a real slap to the face, honestly. Uh, I hated Vaporeon already. This just made me angrier. So, I'm already getting damaged by the burn. And at this point, I'm just going to go all to the wall. Draco Meteor. Let's see what happens. Boom. Only 48.2%. He's able to get off another wish. I am beyond sick of this Vaporeon at this point in the battle, and th that's not even all. Vaporeon's gonna keep on going, so Vaporeon goes for a Protect and a Wish, as I go for another Draco Meteor, just going for Broke here. I, I, I was mad, I was steaming mad, so I'm gonna switch out a lot, I'm gonna switch out Wings, and I'm gonna go back into Y2K, thinking maybe, hopefully, I can kill this thing with a Leaf Storm. He's just gonna go for another Wish. <laughs> you should have seen how angry I was. So he's going to pull out into Excadrill, going to try to to rapid spin this away, and I predict it. I go for the will o -Wisp this time, and I miss. Of all times, the will o -Wisp could have missed, and it missed right when it was important. I made that prediction, I was so proud of myself, and the will o -Wisp misses the Excadrill. Ugh. This is... Karma for round four against Richie when I haxed him out with Y2K against his Mega Venusaur and his Uxie. And I apologize to Richie for that, but it was a good game nonetheless. This is ridiculous now. I haven't gotten any good hacks against Lars, and he's getting a crap load of hacks against me. And at this point, I'm pissed. At least my game against Richie was fairly close. This isn't gonna end well for me. So, he's gonna go for an Exes, or I'm gonna go for the will o -Wisp again, because I know I can at least live one hit from this frickin' Excadrill. And thankfully, I do land it this time, so now his Excadrill is completely blocked from doing what it meant to do. Unfortunately, he could still rapid spin these hazards away. And unfortunately, as I pull out into Edward, he does rapid spin. So all of those hazards I had set up before, the stealth rock, the toxic spikes, they're all gone now. Thankfully, my hazard setter is still alive, but the rocks are still gone. So that's a shame. So he's going to take some more burn damage, and he's going to pull out the next turn into Hippowdon as I Mega Evolve and set up with Edward. I need to sweep at this point. If I don't sweep the rest of his team, I'm going to be in big trouble, so I get ready to set up and destroy his team. So first thing I'm going to do, after that Swords Dance, I'm going to go for a knockoff, knocking off this Hippowdon's leftovers, and he's going to go for a Fire Fang, which I know I would have survived. I set him up in a way where he could survive, so I was completely ready for this. I wasn't ready to get burned by the Mega Scizor. So he's getting all of the hacks right now. He got two critical hit scalds, he got a he got a crit burn. I missed the Will-O-Wisp, and now he gets a burn with Fire Fang. So this is a real slap to the face. This I, I already got slapped to the face. This is a massive paddle smashing me across the face and caving in my eye sockets. I was pissed. So at this point, Edward's done. He can't live. I can't heal him. He's gonna go for a slack off two turns in a row. I'm gonna try to do whatever I can with Edward get as much damage off with bullet punches, but in the end, Edward goes down, and I bring in Wings to finish the job. So I'm going to go for a Draco Meteor. It's going to kill the Hippowdon. Thank God. I live the burn with 3%, and he's going to kill Wings with Ice Shard. In hindsight, I could have probably switched him out, but knowing that I was already locked into uh, whatever I had with a Choice Scarf, Draco Meteor in this case, I wouldn't have been able to bring him back in to live later for death fodder, so unfortunately, Wings goes down, and I bring in Floatzel. This is Floatzel's big debut. I had a really interesting Floatzel set going today, and this is the main reason why I brought Floatzel. He is immune to burns, he's fast, he's a strong physical attacker, he has a lot of great coverage, so I'm going to put some of that to use here. So he's going to pull out into Vaporeon, predicting a water type move, but I'm going to go for Switcheroo, Switcherooing a choice band over to the Vaporeon and taking his leftovers. That was my first step in Rush's strategy, and thankfully it did work out in the beginning. So then I'm going to pull that float, so we'll go back into Muscle Man, 
he's gonna go for a wish so i'm thinking that i can get a drain punch to go regain some health and unfortunately he switches right back into mesprit and i hardly do any damage so at this point mesprit is basically now at full health and zed headbutt is going to kill muscle man but muscle man goes down i'm gonna bring in amistar now and amistar is gonna take a scald out against this uh Excadrill. Excadrill is going to die to the burn, so that is fantastic. Then Mega Sceptile is going to come in, go for a Giga Drain, and finish off his Ancientness. Uh, so that that's a bit unfortunate, but I couldn't have done anything else to switch out, as Y2K would not have survived. And at this point, Mega Sceptile is just going to finish off the rest of my team, including Floatzel. It's a shame, but good game to Lars. Uh, he played around my team really well, but honestly, he had a lot of hacks that really enabled him to win the match. Um, and Karma is a bitch. <laughs> Karma Karma just sucks. I mean, that's what happens when you get a lot of luck one game, you go into the next. You're not gonna do well without getting a little bit of payback for it, so good game. Hopefully, uh, some point down the road, I can put Rush to better use and not get hacks down nearly as much. But that's going to be all for week 4 of the GPC. Keep your eyes out for week 5s. So that'll be coming very soon. And I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching.